Hey everybody, my name is Don from Doodle GM, and today I'm gonna cut nonlinear camera movement, which we can see right here. We can go even crazier with this. I'm gonna cover a few things in the tutorial, but this is just an example. And one other thing, I'm using this time a screen cap recorder. I hope it's it won't be too annoying. If it's too annoying, I'm gonna disable it for future tutorials, but um, maybe it helps a few of you to get started with it. But with that said, is if you have any questions, if you want me to do a follow-up, if you, if you want me to de uh, deep dive a bit more on the topic, let me know. But with this said, enjoy the video. Hey everybody, today I'm gonna go over how to create a non-linear camera that can follow paths and do all crazy stuff. So what we wanna start with is we wanna go down a side scroll character and actually just create and delete those, the camera really quickly. Um, it's mainly just so we can use a custom camera. There we go. And after that, we want to create a new blueprint class, which we're going to use a pawn. And we're going to call it camera pawn. And after we've done that, is we're going to just add a camera. There we go. And we want to just place it in the scene. Oh, did I not? I think I didn't. Okay, let's just turn you around then and just move you roughly where we want to start with the camera. So let's just move it right here and let's set this to zero. Also, we want to set our character to zero. So let me actually do something very quickly. Uh, appearance. Let's take the width in the font size a bit down yeah that's a bit better okay so what we want to do next is we want to go cinematics and we want to add a level sequence and we want to call it test sequence there you go it opened on my second monitor we just want to create this we don't want to do anything with this so what we're going to do next is go on our such score character and i have to and you shouldn't open over there. Uh, I just have to look in my own code very quickly. How I how the node is called. So it's set view target with blend. Okay, so we wanna event begin play. Then we're gonna get all actors of class. And what we wanna get is also sorry that I'm doing this on the go, but uh, can I, no, I can't. So um, anyway, we're going to get our camera. How do we actually call it? Camera pawn. There we go. Then we want to get our first index and we want to Remote this to a variable which we're gonna call active cam or active camera. Then we wanna get our player controller and then we wanna blend. Set view target with blend and our new target is this. So, what we can see if we now be click play is we see our level through that camera. Okay, what we want to do next now is we want to get in our side scroller and we want to hook up an event tick. And what we're going to do is we get our actor location. We're going to break vector. And let me just whiff to like 200. Sorry, I, I just don't want to have like a lot of stuff showing on the uh, being cluttered up on the bottom left. And what we want to do on event tick, we want to make another vector. And why I'm doing this is I want to cancel those numbers out because we don't want the length of the depth. So what we're going to do is we get vector length 
and we promote this. Ah, okay, we need to turn. How's it called? Um, let's just make a new variable which we're gonna call location, which gonna be an integer. So we hook this up right here. Plug this in here. Plug this in here. So what's gonna happen now? is we can actually show this so let's hook up a print string and just plug this in right here so we click play we can see that we change our location and yeah so the next thing will be i think the most interesting so what we're gonna do next Yes, I can also close a few things here. I'm, I'm kind of not prepared for this, but uh, what we want to do next is we want to go into the main team, uh, the, not the main team, uh, the sequencer, and we want our open our level sequencer. So what we want to do in this level sequencer is we want to, for now, get like 300. And what we want to track is the camera pawn and specifically the transform we can also um, do a lot more stuff but i just wanted to have the transform for now so if we go in here and we just if we're fine with our current location we can just add a frame and if we want to more, make more of a linear animation, we can go to roughly like 300 and take our camera, take it up to minus 300. And then we can get location and we can just set it. So what we would have right now is just a linear camera drive. We can, I can even show this if I really quickly go into blueprints, open level blueprint and event tick. We gonna, no, uh, we want event begin play, but we also need our tick. So we get all actors of class, class which, which is gonna be camera on we get the first reference no no we want our main main to me whoops how did i get that give me one second uh i think i just clicked on it in here and then right click and create a, yeah then we want time and we want to set our custom dot time dilation every tick but what we need for that we need to get all actors of class i was wrong so so and in here we want to get side scroll scroll of character get the first reference and promote this to variable which is gonna be camera ref which is just gonna be a camera reference and then we take our camera ref we get our where is it how do we call it get a uh, get location and then we just plug this in so what we're doing right now is on event tick we're getting our location we're breaking it we're making a new vector we get that length so we get the y length and turning it uh, Tonight, I, ca I can't say the word. We round it up to an uh, uh, to an integer. Then we set this integer, and we don't need this anymore. And on event uh, event begin play, we get all actors of camera pawn. We get the first reference. We set this to active camera, and then we set our camera with this node here. So if we now click play, and I forgot something apparently. Uh, actually, let me um, let 
me check something out really quickly. Oh wait, it's it's jump to frame. Oops. So let's open up our level blueprint. And we don't want to use custom time dilation that was due. Um, but we want to make frame number and then make frame time. Also, we want to right click. Uh, Where is it? Test sequence, we want to right click and create reference. Then sequence play here. Get sequence player and then we want to jump to frames. And we can just hook this up easily right here, right here. And if we click play now, and we go out of here and minimize here, we can make a custom following camera when we move. But this is not really that interesting, but we can also do that with other things. But if we, for example, want to take our camera and take it right here. And for example, want to do something like we want to slightly go up and right here, then we can do this and we can just overwrite those frames and oh. Yeah, that's a little bit of an issue. Let me fix this. So one thing to keep in mind is you have to stay. Um, give me one second, which. Uh, so we have our, yeah, okay, uh, our rotation. Our yaw needs to be into the minus because if you have like it spinning, just flip the numbers around. It's it's a bit weird. So we can have stuff like this. I think we can even like set the FOV. Can we track the FOV? Uh, path. Camera, field of view. So yeah, we could do even fancy stuff with field of view. So if we want to head right here, for example, to zero zero, and we want to have our FOV at 90 there, then over here, change to like a 45. And then all the way over here, we want to have like a 25. We can do that. So if we now click play, okay, that's a bit too close. So Let's switch it out to like a, or actually we can just move, uh, we should just move the rotation nodes because after all we're still want the location. So the location should always be the current frame you have in centimeters. So to explain what I actually did is every time the character moves, we add like a value here. And this value drives directly the camera. So one, for example, in the sequencer will be frame one. So you will have later a really long sequencer if you have like really complex nodes, but you can, you have like free range of what you want to do. And from what I know, it doesn't really impact the frame, uh, the performance that much. So it's a really, really nice tool to use for stuff. So, and I, I kind of just want to play around a little bit with it now and go over some options. So if we, for example, going to go here and then do something like this and then track our rotation, I bet it will spin. Actually, no, it doesn't. And it, what, so what we can do with this is if we wouldn't be to totally off. So what we can do is we can, if we go to that frame, so for example, if we know it 300, 
and we can for example move this also in and also zero out that rotation to the other direction so let's just um i think it's our y location no minus nine and uh, i think it was yeah yeah and then we want to just track our transform so what happens now is like we can we have a lot of possibilities what we can do with it and if i go a little bit, bit less with the node here and maybe take it up to like a 50. oh yeah and i have a harsh jump in there because i think i accidentally made double notes Did I? No, I didn't, but something is weird. So let me just get rid of our location here and go back here and actually set our timeline at 300 and then just roughly set it to be behind a player so let's yeah let's zero out and then we can just click track so if we click play now we just have like a little follow camera and you can go really crazy with this stuff you don't have to follow me on like something i show you can really do pretty much whatever you want in sense of camera you just need to keep in uh, you should just um keep in mind to use your frames as like a like every frame as like one centimeter moved you can also do it like divided by 10 and have like every 30 frames instead of every 300 like uh, instead of 300 units will be like f three meters only you can also divide it by 10 and have like 300 meters uh, 300 units be like 30 meters it's all up to you really um but yeah with this said i'm gonna conclude this tutorial and I want to really see what you're going to do with this because I'm really excited to see. With this said, I wish you all a nice day and goodbye.